Hey, David, thank you so much for inviting me to talk today about something that I really, really love to discuss, which is prayer. And uh, so today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about five, pray, uh, five ways to pray during hard times. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of lead off with a little bit of a story. And then what I want to do is try to make something for everyone that's practical, something that they can take away right at the end of this kind of just go and do uh, because I, you know, just to give you a little background, I worked in publishing for the last 25 years, 26 years now. And I've been really, really lucky to work with some amazing spiritual thinkers um, and spiritual writers, you know, everyone from uh, Pope Benedict and Pope Francis to Scott Hahn to Robert Barron. So I've been really, really fortunate over the years to, to just kind of, get to work with these great writers on their work, but also get to digest their work. So in many ways, my job was like going to school constantly. So uh, these are just kind of some things I've learned along the way from all the reading I've done and through all the praying I've done and all the meditating I've done over the years. And I want to share it with you because I know it's been effective for me and I hope it's going to be effective for you. So anyway, a uh, quick story. When I was about 12, it was about 12, um, I used to ride my bike around town a lot. And, uh, and so I live on Long Island and I'm not that far away from a place called Hempstead uh, Lake. And so I'd ride my bike sometimes like on the weekends and just go off to Hempstead Lake and I would go exploring. And I remember there was one particular day I rode my bike, kind of put my bike down, went for a walk in the woods and, and I heard something stirring. And I look around and I hear it stirring again. And I can see not that far away from me, maybe 10, 15 feet, a white rabbit, right? And it isn't like, this isn't Alice in Wonderland. This isn't the Jefferson airplane kind of trippy kind of white rabbit. I legitimately saw this white bunny uh, in the woods. And which is kind of strange because that rabbit was not camouflaged at all. And so if it was a, kind of a uh, wild rabbit. I'm sure it would have been brown, but here's like a bright white rabbit in the middle of the woods, which makes me think now that someone had a pet that they dumped, that they thought it was a good idea to dump it into the woods. In any event, I saw this rabbit and my 12 year old mind went to just one thing, which is how do I catch that rabbit, right? And so I become like this uh, Elma Fudd, if you guys know uh, Bugs Bunny, right? That I'm gonna get this wascally rabbit. And so I go in pursuit. And what do you think the rabbit does when I go chasing it? Well, yeah, it runs away. <laughs> and uh, so I run a little and I would stop. And I tell you, this rabbit, you know, would run and then stop and kind of look back at me. And then I'd chase it and then it would run. And I chase it the third time and it would continue to run and stop when I stopped. And it would look back at me. And at a certain point, I just kind of gave up because it was always so far out of reach. And uh, I thought about that rabbit 20, 30, 40 years. No, not 40, I'm not that old. Um, but the, uh, for a long time. But it was about 10 years after that event, that moment in the woods, that I began to realize that that, that was really kind of a God moment for me in that something clicked on me and it made me realize that when we go in pursuit of things, a lot of the times the things that we go in pursuit of kind of run away, right? And, uh, but when we can be still, you know, we can get a pretty good look at it. And I remember being my 12 year old self kind of when I stopped, that rabbit stopped and I looked and it looked back at me and I wasn't moving. I got a really good glimpse of what the rabbit looked like. And and it really became a metaphor for my relationship with God. And I think from a very, very young age, I've had this desire to want to know God. Um, even if I didn't articulate it that way, there was something pushing me, kind of a yearning, a longing, something I can't really define that I felt when I woke up, that I felt during the day, that I felt right before I went to sleep. And I've come to learn that that really, that, that, that longing is really a longing for God. And, and for many years, I went in pursuit 
of God, by trying to legitimately find God, you know, many, many different places. And a lot of times it eluded me. But when I was able to kind of find stillness, or actually practice stillness, it was in that practice that I realized, you know, when I can slow down, when I can stop racing, stop chasing everything all the time, often, you know, we get a good glimpse of what we're looking for. And at the same time, and sometimes, you know, what we're chasing, because we're relaxed, kind of comes closer to us, at least seemingly, right? I mean, that's what it, it felt like for me. It feels like the times when I kind of back off, all of a sudden things seem to work out better than when I'm constantly forcing things to happen. Right? And I think a lot of people who maybe in, who may have been in relationships or have had relationships in the past know that you know you could be looking for a girlfriend, looking for a boyfriend, right? Looking for a significant other, you know, and you're searching, 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 searching. And then you get kind of fed up, you're like, and, and you're not finding anybody. But then you give up and then all of a sudden someone pops up into your life, right? Because you're not pushing. You're not, you're not, you're not in this struggle against life. So anyway, that's just a preamble to talk about kind of five easy ways that you can pray during tumultuous times, during difficult times. And we are living in very, very stressful times. And I've become really interested over the last five, six, maybe even 10 years now in the relationship between stress and prayer and, and the things that stress does to our bodies, but also in turn, since we are kind of, I mean, we're body and soul, I don't even like that word and, I feel like we're body soul, right? That we're the, the body and the soul are this, this one unit. So what happens to our body affects our soul, what happens to our soul affects the body. And so I'm really interested in that, in that connection and how stress, you know, can really play a part, uh, sometimes in a positive way, but sometimes in, in a most often kind of in a negative way for our soul life. But that's complex too, but we'll just kind of keep it simple that, that I've just found, and I think a lot of other researchers have found, that obviously stress does things to the body. And if we believe that the body and the soul are interconnected, then we have to think that, you know, what happens to us physically is also changing us mentally and spiritually. So are there things that we can do for the body that help the soul and are there things for the soul that can help the body and then just kind of help ourselves throughout the entire, you know, within the unit that is us? I think there are, and I think there are ways of doing that. So just five simple ways to pray during hard times and so, usually don't like take notes and just kind of ad lib, but I want to make sure I get this right for you guys. So uh, if I'm looking down, it's kind of like refreshing my memory on some of the things I wanted to say. All right. So first one, um, so how should you pray during hard times? And look, as I said before, we're under stressful times, right? Uh, the coronavirus is still sweeping across, you know, the world. Uh, there's social unrest, right? There's high unemployment. We have economic uncertainties. Uh, the poverty levels are crazy right now. The, the, the strife that is going on between us, not, not just as Americans, but as citizens of the world, you know, is very, can put a lot of stress on, on everybody. So the very first thing that I like to do, right, and it seems so simple, but I think going back to basics is really, really important, is to pray the Our Father, right? And so that's how, you know, when, when the apostles asked Jesus how to pray, his response is the Our Father, right? And he gives us a very, very basic prayer. But what I've liked to do with it is to really, is, is to synchronize it with our breath, right? And so the, you know, by saying the Our Father, but by doing it in a very, very like strict a breathing pattern, I think can be really, really helpful, right? And it's a way of taking the Our Father and kind of just putting a tiny little spin on it, but also involving the body, right? And I think as much as we want to pray with our minds and pray with our hearts, you know, pray with our souls, it's also important to kind of pray with the body. So if you are focusing on your breath, as you focus on the words, that can be really, really helpful. 
And I know the Our Father, if you're a Christian, or the Lord's Prayer, if you're a Christian, uh, the Our Father, if you're a Catholic, you know, it can become rote after a while, right? You just, you've said it so many times, or you've heard it so many times in Mass, or, you know, or you've prayed it yourself so many times that sometimes you can just whip right through it and not even pay attention. But breathing and saying the Our Father can be really, really, uh, I think can really kind of change can really be a bomb for your soul, right? And, and I think it can also, there's also physical things that, that happen through it. Uh, just to share a quick story, you know, I got pneumonia last September. Um, my doctor's trying to help me out, give me like a, give me a steroid, an inhaler, and a cough syrup, right, to try and help me. So I was in really bad shape. And so I took all this stuff, and it somehow, the pneumonia coupled with the medicine created an adverse reaction uh, my heart rate went from you know, somewhere hovering between 80 and 90, usually when I was healthy, to being 150, 160, 170 constantly for weeks. My heart didn't stop racing. I'd go to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh, you know, this is bad. So let's run all these tests, but the tests are fine. So we're not really sure what's happening. And I would use kind of breath prayer, you know, to try and kind of bring my heart rate down. And it didn't work while I was praying, but then it would kind of like zoom up when I, you know, there was something just physically that was off because of all these medications that I had to let them kind of run out of my system before, you know, I could get back to kind of stasis. So anyway, it did help. And it's helped me over the years kind of lower my blood pressure. And I've actually done tests where I've hooked myself up to a blood pressure a monitor and have prayed and have you know taken the, taken down the results. And the results are that I can lower my blood pressure and I can lower my pulse rate uh, to kind of healthy levels when I do this. So, our Father, the number one um, prayer, you know, for these kind of five ways to pray during hard times. Our Father mixed with breath, and so we do it like this: take a deep breath in and say, "Our Father." Take a deep breath out and say, "Who art in heaven." Take a deep breath in, hallowed be thy name. Take a deep breath out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm forgetting. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And then breathe in, thy will be done. Breathe out on earth as it is in heaven. And then you continue that, right? You can even break it down to a single word, right? So you could take a breath in, our, right? Take a breath out, Father. And then really kind of focus on those words. And, and to try that, you know, uh, sometimes it could be really, you know, sometimes we don't know like what to pray and pray is in prayer. I should have said this in the beginning, but I'm assuming all of you guys know prayers is our communication. It's the way that we can enter into a sacred time of communication with God, right? It's like taking your significant other out to dinner, right? And being in a place where, you know, the things where it's just, you're just focusing on the person you know, across the table from you. And you're trying to block all this other stuff out. It's just a special time. Um, and there's ways of including all the stuff that's going on outside too in prayer. That's for another time. Uh, so try that. Try the Our Father mixed with a breathing rhythm. And if you've done this in the past, you know, a way to kind of like shake it up is a lot of times when we do breathing, we can breathe in and breathe out, right? Um, but a way of shaking it up, if you feel like, oh, I've done that already, is to breathe out and then breathe in, right? So you would say, you know, you would breathe out our Father and then breathe in, hallowed be thy name, right? And you would do that. So you would start on the out breath and then bring it. And then on the second line or second beat, essentially, you would do an in breath. So um, breathe out and then breathe in. So you could try that. <clears throat> All right, so the second way uh, to pray during hard times, and I'm trying to make these like super simple, but super effective. These prayers have really, they have changed my life. And because, uh, you know, God does know what we need. And, and sometimes we don't necessarily need to say much in order to communicate with God. And um, so anyway. God knows what we want. And so 
I'm just trying to give you some simple ideas here, you know, for those times where you can just kind of ease your mind, ease your soul, and allow God's voice to kind of communicate with you. Next one is the Jesus prayer. So the Jesus prayer uh, is a famous prayer that I came across years ago when I read J.D. Salinger's Franny and Zooey. <clears throat> and uh, J.D. Salinger wrote Catcher in the Rye. But in it, uh, one of the characters uh, prays the Jesus prayer, right? And is able to kind of uh, use it and get, um, get herself into a kind of a meditative state. And so the... So the prayer goes like this, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now I drop a sinner um, and just say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And there's a reason why I do that. Because I do think, Tony, I remember hearing Tony Robbins say this, right? Which is uh, repetition is the mother of invention. So I guess repeating a sinner over and over again, I don't want to become more of a sinner. Uh, I want to become less of a sinner. And, and so you can do it the traditional way, which is to kind of just pray to yourself, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or you could just pray, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Uh, depends on, you know, it depends on kind of like what works for you. These, these prayers aren't necessarily mandated from the church. So because they are part of our tradition, I think there's kind of a little bit of leeway in how you, um, how you pray them. You wanna kind of stay as close to them as possible but I think there's a little bit of flexibility there. So I don't want to keep reprogramming myself in a sinner. I want to try and kind of move away from that. But every once in a while, I'll use the sinner at the end as well, just to kind of bring back, you know, go back to basics again, go back to the origin of the prayer. And uh, the prayer has been around for a long time. It's hard to say exactly how long, but it is featured in a book called The Way of the, Pil uh, the, Way of the Pilgrim, which is... Um, kind of a book by a Russian Orthodox anonymous author that talks about the Jesus prayer and how important it is, you know, in terms of helping like your heart to align with God's heart. That's essentially it. And again, this is kind of like repeating prayer. So it becomes something that you can use in prayer and, and, and throughout the day. So, you know, you can pray the Our Father throughout the day, but a lot of times I almost feel like there's too many words there. So you can go to something like, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And repeat that when you're online, standing online outside the grocery store in order to get into the grocery store. I don't know how things are uh, for where you are in, uh, around the United States. But at least the Trader Joe's here in Oceanside, you know, we still have to wait outside before we can go inside. So while you're waiting there, instead of like looking through your phone, you can just repeat over and over again, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Right. And Pope Francis did say, you know, name of God is mercy. So when you say mercy, you really you're kind of intoning the name of God. And the more I feel like that we can replace the crazy thoughts, the, the chatter in our heads with the name of God, the better. And so and again, you could do a breathing pattern for this one as well. So Lord Jesus Christ, breathe in, <clears throat> have mercy on me or have mercy on us. And uh, the original prayer is have mercy on me, but I've also tweaked it a bit to have mercy on us. It's because all of us need God's mercy. So Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. And just breathe that in and breathe it out. All right, so number three, uh, the sacred heart of Jesus, which is kind of featured here, sort of, um, on the cover of a book that I wrote called Life Everlasting, which is about Catholic devotions. But it's not really, a <clears throat> while it's a book of devotions, I kind of was not a huge fan of the subtitle, but it's a publishing thing. And, the, uh, and it's Catholic devotions and meditations for the everyday seeker. I would have tweaked it, but my publisher wouldn't let me um, because it really is kind of a practical book on how to use prayer and it's less a book of like just you know 50 devotions there are devotions in it but it's really about it's really about um <clears throat> how do you uh kind of use prayer in your daily life so okay so sacred heart of jesus i trust in thee or i trust in you so that's the prayer sacred heart of jesus i trust in thee or i trust in you uh fee if you want to kick it back old school and if you want to use you more power to you. Um, I think 
God's fine with both. So again, breathe this one in, Sacred Heart of Jesus, I trust in you. And, you know, and at this point too, what's interesting about this one is that, you know, there is this image of, I'm sure plenty of people have seen, you know, the image of Jesus um, and his heart, you know, is radiating fire and light. And, uh, you know, it's good to kind of add that image in while you're praying the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And again, this prayer is, you know, where the Jesus prayer is about mercy, this prayer is about trust, right? And trusting in the Lord. And, and we need trust in the Lord so much right now. So this has been one that I've been coming back to, especially lately, in the sacred heart of Jesus, I trust in you. And again, repeat it, breathe it, repeat it. Re repeat it when you wake up in the morning, repeat it when you go to sleep at night. I've actually trained myself in some ways that I can, 10 minutes before I go to sleep, I'll just start praying this prayer I swear I'll wake up in, 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 in the morning and that prayer will still be on my lips. So I don't know what's going on while I'm sleeping. I mean, I could be going for a walk for all I know. Uh, but when I wake up, the, uh, I still have those, that, that prayer on my lips. And I do think it does something really, really positive for my soul. So sacred heart of Jesus, I trust in you. Uh, I love that so much. Number four uh, is come Holy Spirit. And again, very short prayer. Um, but we are asking the Holy Spirit, who is always present in our lives, right? But I think we need reminders, really, that the Holy Spirit is present. So I think as much as this is a call to God, it's also a call to ourselves to, to kind of pay attention and to know that the Holy Spirit is a gift of, of God, and that the Holy Spirit is present. You know, and so we just intone, you know, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. And even as I'm saying it, you could blow yourself into a meditative state. But don't do this while you're driving, obviously, or working heavy equipment. Don't want to do that. But before you go to sleep at night, during the day, when you feel like you're getting, you know, when you feel like you might be getting upset or you might be getting fearful, right? Try to replace that fear. Try to imagine however you want to imagine the Holy Spirit, you know, replacing that fear, replacing that sadness, or at least helping you guide you through the fear and the sadness. Maybe it's not necessarily a replacement as much as it's a, a, a way of God helping to direct you through these emotions that all of us have, right? And so, um, yeah, come Holy Spirit is, is really kind of a powerful one. You know, I've been, um, I may write a book about exorcism and spiritual warfare at some point. Uh, and obviously, the you know, one thing that we want to, you know, no one ever wants to be possessed by, by the enemy, right? No, it's, it's a very bad thing. No one wants it and, and you don't want it. But the Holy Spirit, I mean, think about if you were like, if, if you allow the Holy Spirit to just come into your heart and what your, would your life be like, right? If you lived with this, yeah, with the heart of the Holy Spirit pumping blood through your veins and, and the, the brain of the Holy Spirit, you know, just helping you think and make decisions. Uh, it's just transformative. And I think the more that we can ask the Holy Spirit to come to us, right? Uh, Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. So maybe instead of asking for like a, a raise or, 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 you know, a new car or, or whatever, you know, to, to really kind of be careful about what we ask for and maybe ask for the Holy Spirit to kind of come into our lives more fully or help us understand the Holy Spirit's presence more fully to help us unblock the Holy Spirit. So when we intone, come Holy Spirit, you know, I, it can really, it can really, you know what, just try it. I mean, try it and see what happens because I think it can really, all of these prayers can transform your life. And it's also, you know, and you can also get bored of some things. I mean, let's just be like honest, you know, you could do the Jesus prayer and after like three months feel like, you know, it's not working. Um, or after a couple of weeks, I don't feel like it's working anymore. I don't feel like I'm having the same experience that I was having before. Then you can switch to come Holy Spirit or any of the other ones. Okay, and number five, the fifth way to pray during hard times. 
I love this. This is my favorite, right? And it is simply the name Jesus. Right? It's it's the devotion we we'll talk a little bit about in in, in uh, Life Everlasting, which is backwards. Uh, most holy name of Jesus, and and to repeat that word. You're not saying it in vain, right? It's not like you just stubbed your toe or smashed your you know thumb with a hammer. You are intoning probably the most, not probably, the most beautiful name of all time, right? And that's the name of God given to us. You know, it's fully God and fully human. And, you know, something, uh, the person, the real person to, to save our very lives. And so the name of Jesus is just something that you can do very easily, which is to just repeat it. I like to do this throughout the day, which is just Jesus, 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 and touch my heart three times. And kind of harkens back to the Jesus prayer, but it also harkens back to the sacred heart, Jesus. And when I can just say Jesus, 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 uh, I used to do it in meetings. And I remember someone turned to me one day and they're like, are you feeling okay? You didn't, you know? <laughs> I think the person thought I was having indigestion or heart palpitations or whatever, but I was going like this. Uh, and really, I was just praying in the sacred name of Jesus, right? And, you know, and I have been doing some studies with uh, an exorcist down in Washington, D.C. And the one thing he says is that when you're blessing your, you know, when you say grace at night, you know, definitely say grace with your family. When you're out to restaurants, you know, I made that uh, a point with my family when any time we eat out at restaurants, which isn't happening now because we can't go anywhere, Um because of the coronavirus, or I guess we could sit outside and bake in the sun, and I had fair skin, so I can't really bake in the sun all that much. The, you know, is to pray, you know, pray grace, go outside. I mean, when you're outside, uh, you know, even at the bar, you get a beer, and just, you know, say a little prayer that, you know, that, that God's giving you the beer, right? You're at McDonald's, you know, say, say grace when you're eating, you know, in the booth at McDonald's. Uh, but what my priest friend was telling me was that, you know, before, like you start to eat, just have Jesus bless your food. Why? Because he says, you know, sometimes the enemy can just kind of like do things to your food or just kind of like little demons can hang out in your food. I know this sounds maybe so archaic. Uh, it might seem a little strange to some, uh, but you know what? I'm doing it and I do it and I, and I bless our, our food in the name of Jesus every night and ask Jesus to kind of bless his food. The thinking being that the name of Jesus, right, dispels darkness in our lives. And the more that we can say it in, in internally, even externally, I mean, think about it now, I just, how often do you hear about Jesus anymore? I don't know, we talk about church and we talk about, you know, stuff that's going on in the world, but I just haven't heard the name of Jesus you know, you know, outside of mass in a long time, my friends don't even like talk about like Jesus and, you know, and they're Christians and Catholics and, and so anyway, in a very holy and sacred way, repeat the name Jesus throughout the day. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's such a beautiful word and, and it really is such a beautiful world. It can be, um, uh, and it's so much better when we can bring Jesus into it. So Jesus as a prayer, you know, again, it's a devotion that goes back to the most, uh, the most holy name of Jesus, but to repeat that as many times as you possibly can throughout the day. You don't have to say it out loud. You just say it internally. Just Jesus, 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 you know? And, and anything you can do, it's such a, it's just such a beautiful way of replacing some of the sometimes dark thoughts that we may have throughout the day. You know, whether that's, again, fear, anger, you know, disappointment. Uh, I just think, and I think holy, holy people in the past knew the power of the name and the power of naming things. And when we can name Jesus in our life and we can speak that name, I think miracles happen. So I leave it that. Um, I know I'm going to be doing a uh, a uh, 
retreat, I think, later in the week, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about devotions from Life Everlasting, and we'll talk, more, we'll talk a little bit about these things already, but go into more detail about the Sacred Heart of Jesus and things like that. So, yeah, I hope this is a benefit. I hope this is a benefit to you, um, and to just take those, you know, those simple phrases. They are some of the most powerful prayers um, that you can add to your prayer repertoire, right? And you should be able to just kind of like have a conversation with God. But sometimes when we don't know what to say to God, you know, I think we can use these as a way of quieting our minds, quieting our hearts, and quieting and quieting our souls um, so that we can hear. Remember, prayer is a two-way street. So if we're going to be communicating with God, we have to allow an opportunity for God to talk to us. And so these are just five ways that, are, that I found to be really, really helpful in allowing that God space to happen. So that's it. Hope you enjoy and blessings to all of you.